before about Ethel Merman, she was backstage. I went backstage to get coffee. There's a little area back there for contestants and staff to get coffee. And Ethel Merman is pacing back and forth. And, and I said, Ethel, is anything wrong? And she said, yeah, I shouldn't be here. I said, I said, well, what are you talking about? She said, it's fun at home, but I, I'm going to be terrible on the show. Would it be terrible if I left? <laughs> I said, it would be beyond terrible. You, you, you can't do that because you're half of the show. Um, I said, listen, let me tell you something. No matter what you write on the card, it's not wrong. There, is n there are no right answers. Anything you think of, write it down and the audience will love it. And the fact that you're here, that's all that matters. The audience is going to love that. And she said, oh, all right, well, thank you. And, of course, she was great on the show. That's why I'd love to see one of the shows. Did you get a chance to talk uh, to her afterwards? I did not. Oh, I did not. Would have, would have liked to have gotten her reaction. Yes, to I, yeah, I should have. That would have, was that it would have all been what a, she thought, presumably. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's fascinating. On Facebook, someone uh, said, oh, I just saw you uh, as Bugs Bunny on To Tell the Truth. And I said, uh, you mean Yogi Bear, right? Uh, and he said, no, Bugs Bunny. And I thought, well, wait a minute. I was Yogi Bear on To Tell the Truth. So I do a web search, and I was also Bugs Bunny <laughs> on To Tell the Truth. And Gary, and it's on YouTube, the the whole episode. And I come out, and I pick out, I, pick out, uh, I think it's Bob Clampett. And... Gary says, and Bugs is not Bugs. It's really one of our staff, Dick DiBartolo. I do not, I remember doing Yogi uh, Bear because Bill Hanna, who was, you know, the founder of Hanna-Barbera and those characters, uh, after the show, he said, God, you are so good. Um, we're opening a new park this weekend, which is what he was up there plugging. He said, We'll fly you down to Atlanta. You want to open the park with us? And I said, oh, my God, yes. Well, let me tell you something. When you are in a, a costume, you can pretty much do anything. And I had the time of my awesome. life. Awesome. They had a band there up on a platform, and I marched up, and I took the baton out of the conductor's hand and I led the band and uh, it was just amazing hotter hotter than hell my god it is unbearable in those costumes but my uh, that was one great day that was just super okay Dick I've got okay. my recordings running we've put the TriCaster onto the stream so the good folks at home can see the show um, I have to figure out what the day is and what episode number it is. Okay, I got it. Today is, we're going to show, we're going to record, we're going to make, we're going to create the 486th episode of the Gizfits. And we're going to do that today, Saturday, July 30th, 2022. And we're going to do it in three, two. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for... It's the Giz Fizz with the Giz Whiz. It's kind of like Cheese Whiz. It's the Giz Fizz. And now your host, Matt Mattis Ryder and the Giz Whiz, Dick DiBartolo. Welcome to regular old-fashioned Giz Fizz. With the Twin Harp Ladies coming to you live from Anxiety State, where I made the Dean's List. Okay, today we have, well, first of all, we'll ask our traditional, is there anyone who wants to be chat room celebrity of the week? Crickets are there, okay. We are going to have, oh, I'll chat with somebody of the week. I emailed George, okay? 
And hopefully, George, you are, I maybe will embarrass you into doing this because you didn't respond to my email. George said in a couple of weeks or a few weeks or a month or so, he's going to turn 80. And I said, there's a great shot. A great shot. I said, George, please do me a favor. And I'm sure the chat room would love it. If you could pick the Saturday closest to your birthday so we can all celebrate it with you. So, George, I'm sure you're listening. I think George needs to go someplace to be chat room celebrity of the week because of bandwidth problems and why he's not actually uh, signed into chat. He sort of uh, follows chat. Uh, I guess unsigned in. Anyway, I know he's listening. George, please join us as a thank you because you do incredible work. Okay, we're going to do captions from George Davis. We have more fun facts from George Davis. Then we're going to do some logo, some I'm not saying you're stupid. You'll write some snappy answers to a stupid question. We'll have a couple of beer commercials. And we'll play Match Game. All on this episode of Giz Fizz. Uh, okay, let's start with regular old-fashioned Giz Fizz. Thank you, John, for reminding me. <laughs> yes, it is Myra playing the harp. Um, okay, so let's start with photo number one. Oh, my gosh. All right, so it's a bird's nest, but we assume someone snuck in like an extra large brown egg, like out of a supermarket uh, box of eggs. Big egg in a small basket, and it's whatever you want it to be. The golden egg. I thought you said chicken McNuggets. Uh, I thought you said chicken nuggets. Uh, egg too big for nest. Got to protect your nest egg. How did the ostrich get up the tree? Nest egg. Uh, original Google Nest Cam. Future Egg McMuffin. Tomorrow's breakfast. 401k. Who needs a dozen eggs when all is all you need? One basket, one egg. Any questions? Nice omelet. Put all your eggs in a basket. Is that it? Golfer, I made a hole in one. Now there's a picture of me before I was hatched, says Chickenhead. Honey, I shrunk the nest. Unnatural post poached egg. Uh, that's egg, egg, excellent. Excellent. Uh, how did this nest get in my Christmas tree? T Rex egg. M Mama got a hernia. Is that something here or is that something John's doing? I'm, I'm not doing that. Um, it is coming from your side. Yeah. Now it stopped. Uh, okay. Uh, Santa climbing down the chimney. Are you running around on me with that ostrich? Uh, I go to Serenity State, but I'm in an anxiety club there. That's very funny. Easter Bunny laid this egg. And my rejoice, put away your Game Boy. And we'll end with, it's the bird about to hatch. And George Davis said, for a big egg in a small nest, I am almost sure the bird that sits on this egg can't be the one that laid the egg. If it is, it's a miracle. Uh, okay. Photo number two. That was the weirdest thing. Photo number two. Uh, a gelatin mold. Okay, it's a gelatin mold that looks like a bunt cake, right? People in chat, isn't that a bunt cake form? Uh, anyway, it looks like a jello watermelon. It's whatever you want it to be. Whatever you want it to be. Dragon fruit jello. Uh, there's always room for jello. Insert file in jello bunt cake. Thank you. Dragon fruit jello bunt is the modern jello. I saw it. We eat it. 
It's a Jello Bunt. Dragon Fruit Jello. Klingon Blood Cake. Oh my God. Myra Joyce's Snack. Uh, our house was condemned for being full of gelatin mold. Oh, that's very funny. Dyson side mold. Thanksgiving came early. Jello with dice included. Watermelon ring. Oh, Jello. Hospital Jello is getting pretty fancy. <laughs> yeah. Sesame seed Jello. My mom had a Jello mold like that. Oh my God. Dragon food Jello fun. Jello watermelon. Bunt berry shortcake. Blood sausage jello, jello dice, raspberry and pineapple, steak tata jello, ah, jiggly dice, brings back childhood horror of jello with salad in it. Oh no, a clever idea. Put your drink in the middle. Watermelon that fits the mold, red armadillo jello cake, and we'll end with are those dice in the mold? Oh, you know, I think you're right. They do look they like do dice. Look, they do look like dice. Must oh, be no, Vegas but, Jello. No, they're chunks of watermelon. Those are watermelon. Oh, right. With, yeah. They're not regular. Um, the pips aren't regular enough to be dice. Uh, let's see. George said for the cake and a Jello mold. My caption is: Once you taste a strawberry cake in this Jello, it should become one of your favorite three desserts. So George calls it cake in the jello. Um, okay, photo number three. Wow, so it's a man on a hill overlooking miles of desert. Man on top of a hill overlooking desert. Nothing living in sight. Done dude. <laughs> Here, camel, 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 where'd you all the water go? Who stole my bloody desert? Uh, could have sworn I parked my car right here. World's longest par four golf course. I thought I saw some water here. Parting of the Red Sea. How much further to the beach? Moses, you overdid that split. Someone forgot to water. Split. First American on Mars. Uh, seen from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Lake Mead 2026. I think you're right about that. Um, Wi-Fi stinks out here. They're going fast. Waiting for my Uber camel. Um, Lawrence of Arabia gets some new Nikes. Lake Mead in a few months. Hmm, um, I smell oil. Where is everybody? Where? What are these images? Leo will retire here. No one can see me. No one can see me. I'm camouflage. Worm sign. Worm sign is not strong here. This looks like a good place for a new shopping mall. Surveying. Where did my camel go? And the third one will end with this. Me looking at Lake Mead this morning. Okay, Lake Mead um, is outside of Las Vegas. And we used to do, when I was working for the boating magazine, we did our boat tests there. And I saw pictures of Lake Mead with the marina that we worked at is like a mile from the lake. I mean, what's left of the lake. It's, it's astounding. Uh, let's see. George said, for a man standing on top of a small hill in the desert, my caption is, I've been waiting in an hour in this 120 degree heat for my uber car doesn't show up in 15 minutes i'm going to cancel the ride well you got close we had people looking for an uber camel uh okay photo four photo up oh, one of jamma b's favorite kind of pictures view of the entire earth view of the entire earth let me i'm, I'm waving let's see if we can see my hand no i guess not Okay, we're outside the uh, Earth and we're looking down at it. So Earth from space. Um, Earth by Google Earth. I see the Chinese rocket. Earth selfie. Oh, that's very funny. Pack N W. Uh, world's a big blue marble when you see from up here, up there. Superman's adopted home. I see my house from up here. This is where all the water went. 
Uh, this is photo three zoomed out. Fancy marble. Uh, Myra, I can see my house from here. Large rock. Want to trade the marble for a cat's eye? Why is there a tornado going toward Mexico? Wish you were here. The small blue marble. Um, a view of the earth. If you only think of the Western Hem, if you only think the Western Hemisphere matters, they're going so fast. Uh, pretty blue green marble. I can see Russia from my house too. I spy a hurricane with an eye. You are here. I swam there in '72, hitchhiking across the U.S. Biggest yellow in the galaxy, Earth to Dicky. It's truly a small world, and you have to walk somewhere. Web telescope trying to do a selfie. Northern summer. Pristine Earth before the Industrial Revolution. And we'll end with Earth from the New Space Motel. And let's see. George said, for, for the view of the whole Earth... My caption is, why would anyone want to live anywhere else? We have it all here. Let's take care of this place. And oh, good on, those, on that line of not thinking, I'd like to, to play a song. It, okay. It, it's a short song. Okay. Well, obviously he can't do it. Okay. Who is that? We got Jack Black, uh, an awful lot of Tiny Tim. Frank Zappa. Frank Zappa. Oh, okay. Harry Nilsson. I thought Monty Python too, but no. Frank Zappa. Holy cow. Um, dun, dun, dun. Photo five is. Uh, is. The, oh, oh, wait a minute. Is it, okay. I thought I saw Alex. Yeah, I yeah. I, I, this might be from uh, Alex's house. Oh, I think it is. Okay. Uh, it is the Seattle Space Needle at night. And Alex is up there trying to say there was a bug in his soup and he's not paying for his dinner. Uh, okay. Space Needle at night. Alex is home. Space Needle. Uh, space, Seattle Space Needle, Needle at Night, Future Retirement of the Laportes, Earth Picture taken from the top of here. It's a large pepper mill. We all live on a big blue planet. I thought it would be bigger. Needling Space. Is that a camel going through the eye of the Space Needle? Oh, that's funny. Space Needle Trucking, Alex's new hangout, adjusting the needle. Space Vaccine. Skyscraper on the right had an alien pyramid land on it. Oh, that's funny. Um, Alex takes another great photo. Home of the Jetsons. Stop needling us. Uh, folks inside are a bit nervous after the quake. Space needle from Earth. Uh, the size needle you need for the new COVID vaccine. I'm not changing that light bulb on the top. Jetsons condo. Uh, uh, a view from Alex's work. Space Needle where the UFO parked. Vaccine COVID from this needle. There are a couple of really cool museums at the base of the needle. Uh, pushing the needle too far. A photo taken in between rainstorm breaks. My second booster shot seems bigger than the others. The Leaning Tower of Space. I see Foster Brooks. If this is the needle, the bowl of yawn must be huge. And we'll end with the weeds in this park. The, the, the weeds in this park this year are ridiculous. Um, okay, and George said... For the night shot of the Seattle Space Needle, my caption is, Hey, look, everyone. Oh, you got a lot of matches. Hey, look, everyone. That's Alex in the window waiting to go into the restaurant at the top. Yeah, Which he's the one on the no right. no longer there. 
Alex oh, it's gone? Me. Yeah, I visited the Space Needle 10 years ago and had a meal up in the restaurant at the top. Alex says they got rid of the restaurant and it's only sightseeing now for uh, oh. like a couple of years ago. Oh, okay. Uh, all right, and then number six of six is... Got a weird tree with the branches touching the ground, okay? It's a short tree, and the tree is so short, all of the branches grow to the ground. All right. Six of six. A spider tree, says Myra. World's the laziest tree. Tree loses its balance. This tree sure took root. Tree that didn't feel like treeing today. You can't see the forest for the tree. Release the kraken. Leaning tree of Pisa. Birds are getting way too heavy. I think pruning time is past due. Magic beans I planted actually sprouted. Learn to climb a tree here. A live oak on the move. Shrunken tree, real down-to-earth tree. It's not a tree, it's a bug. Tree needs a trim. Octopi tree, well, it's not going to fall down, <laughs> says Big Don. Drunk tree, more hammocks. Leaning tower of tree on hands and knees. Give those branches a hand. My family tree has no limbs. Upside-down tree, good place to camp. Tree Climbing Clinic, Basic Edition. And we'll end with Hawk's Post. The limbs are feeling very tired. Okay. George said for a lot of low-hanging oak branches, my caption is, as kids, we came to this very tree to climb on the branches. It was so much fun. Okay, we got someone who talked about tree climbing. And now, fun time, fact time, all about animals, says George. The strongest bite of any animal is the Nile crocodile. His jaws can apply blank pounds per square inch. Okay, strongest bite of any animal, Nile crocodile. His jaws can apply blank pounds per square inch. Um, wow, they are all over the lot. Need I say no Googling because we have two dead-on answers. More than enough. <laughs> Stu said, I don't want to be his dentist. Wow. We have numbers in the hundreds, numbers in the thousands. Toad Slot said, most of us crunch at 50 pounds. Myra, any guess or a guess? 2,000. 2,000 pounds per square inch. Jamma B, you're usually good at this kind of stuff, offbeat stuff. 500 pounds per square inch. 500 pounds per square inch. Strongest bite of any animal, the Nile crocodile. His jaw can apply 5,000 pounds Woo. per square inch. And we had two of those right up top. So if you did guess it, that was pretty good. If not, you're a lousy, rotten cheat. <laughs> okay. There's no middle ground here. Uh, okay. The shortest gestation period in days of an animal is how many days? Shortest known gestation period in days of an animal is how many days? Days, wow. Why are we spending all these months? Nine days, two days? 
Seven day, 24 hours. What? Shortest period of gestation for an animal. Uh, Myra, any guess? Um, no. Okay, Jamma B? One day. One day. Conceive an animal in one day. Isn't um, that like a, a fly or something? I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, the shortest gestation period of an animal is 12 days, and it's the Virginian opossum. Yeah, maybe they meant big animals. I mean, insects wow. are insects are animals. Yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. maybe Twins. maybe that's maybe Myra's got the right answer. <laughs> what did you say? They don't they don't gestate, if that's a word. They lay eggs. Oh, oh, okay. Oh that that's probably right. Um <laughs> how you could ever, ever, ever guess this, lots of luck, but we'll blew it. How many glasses of milk does a cow produce in its lifetime? How many glasses of milk can a cow produce in its lifetime? Well, I, I don't even know how much milk a cow produces in a day. Uh, 100,000? <laughs> Twisted Mister says, none, it doesn't come out in glasses. <laughs> Uh, 10,000, 278,000, zero, cows can't make glass. Is the glass half full? 50,000. Myra, any guess? 7,000. 7,000. Jamma B? 500,000. I think it's got to be a lot. Um, all right. I, I saw the answer, so I'm not going to guess. But if I did guess 200,000, I would be right. The average amount of glasses of milk a cow produces in his lifetime is 200,000. You know what? I think someone had 200,000. That's very good. And finally, the tongue of a blue whale, which is the largest animal on earth, can weigh as much as blank pounds, okay? The largest animal on earth is the blue whale. How much can his tongue weigh? All right. Oh, no. Gotta be, I'm going with a ton, 2,000 pounds. Uh, Myra? 275. 275 pounds. And Jamma B? 150. 150. I'm way off then. Okay. Um, the tongue of the blue whale, largest animal on earth. Oh my God, his tongue can weigh as much as 5,400 pounds. Eh, it's like 27 tons. The weight of a small car. Ranger Rick said 5,000. I mean, someone might have been right on, but Ranger Rick, as far as what I can see on the screen right now, Ranger Rick is closest with 5,000. The answer on the sheet is 5,400. Um, thanks for reading these captions. You're doing all the hard work while we enjoy the answers, says George. Thank the chat room for contributing, for constantly giving and great answers. Stay happy. Be well, everybody. See you next time. Bye, George. Remember, George, consider our offer. <laughs> okay. It's more of an ultimatum. Uh, uh, okay. Ta -da. Oh, you know, maybe we'll do the Paul Coca stuff now. Okay. All right, so Paul Coca, one of the original usual gang of idiots, uh, unfortunately passed on in the past week at 93. Um, Paul and I did 
18 uh, Mad pieces together, five movies and a TV show. But my favorite thing in Mad, and I, I, don't, I don't even know who came up with the uh, thing, is horrifying cliches. And see, several people earlier said, oh, my God, I love horrifying cliches. And what it was is you would take an everyday phrase and Paul would uh, make a drawing for it. And I think Jamma B has a few examples of Paul Coca art. And we can see exactly how this works. Okay, horrifying okay. cliches. I wrote something. I was zooming in on the uh, marginalia, and I'm still trying to figure this one out. Um, <clears throat> it looks like a horse has done its business, and yes. a dog is by the horse's business. And I think, I, oh, yes. I think maybe the people will look around and be surprised at the dog's business. I'm not, is that what the joke is? Um, I'm one, I think the dog is wondering, did I do all that? Isn't that sort of a question mark over the door? I don't know. Yeah. But oh, these are, okay. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 these are called Mad Marginals, and, and Sergio Aragonis did them. Um, now, Frank Jacobs wrote these particular horrifying cliches. I'm not sure if he did them all. Horrifying crime cliches. Uh, okay, the first one is packing a rod. Okay, you hear that expression all the time. <laughs> so, here's a guy packing a rod. And off to the right is committing a felony, all right? And there's a British guard with the keys to the dungeon, and they are committing a felony. Uh, running a racket, okay? There's a guy who looks suspiciously like William Gaines. He's running, and he has a racket, which is now a horrifying creature, uh, He's on a leash by his nose. He's running the racket, putting out a contract, innkeeper, throwing this weird beast out, and the beast is a contract. So he's putting out a contract. And was it just the four of them, Jamie B? Yes. Okay. Uh, anyway, those are horrifying cliches. One of my favorite things uh, in MED. So, Paul, say hi to Bill Gaines up there in heaven which would be very tricky because uh, Bill was an atheist. I never forget, I had a conversation with Bill. I was talking about, I don't know, taxes, I guess. And, and I said, Bill, when, the, when you go on a mad trip and you take the entire mad staff to mad in a foreign language, how do you decide what part of the trip is business and what part of a trip is pleasure? And he said, uh, uh, if I go on a trip and it's not all business, I don't write it off, whatever it is, I ended up saying, my God, you're so honest, you're going to go to heaven. And, and I, he said, I'm not going to heaven. I'm an atheist. And I said, <laughs> and we both started laughing. I said, Wait a minute, you're honest because you want to be? And it just struck us both as so funny. But yes, he's honest because he wanted to be. And, oh, and I'll tell you another incredible example of this. Um, at Bill's memorial when Bill died, the vice president of Warner Communications... Uh, Warner owns Mad, okay, Warner, somehow, through some dealing, and I don't know what it was. Oh, I know, Warner bought DC Comics, okay, and for some reason, Mad was part of DC Comics. For a while, Mad was part of Time Magazine, okay, because Warner didn't know what to do with it, and I, I, I went in and Bill said, guess who your employer is? I said, who? He said, Time Magazine, and I said, what are you talking about? I could Time Magazine. He said, I don't know either. He said, it was a stupid decision they made over at um, executive headquarters. They didn't know where to stick mad, so they decided we're part of time. And I said, well, what's going to happen? And he said, oh, in the, in the corporate world? Um, th in three years, 
time will suddenly, someone will say, did you know that mad is a uh, part of us? And he said, that'll be three years. And then it'll take another two years for them to think, well, what should we do about it? And he said, by then, mad will put us somewhere else. Anyway, at this thing, uh, he said to Bill, he said, Bill, you're now part of Warner Communications and we have a executive bonus plan. And every year that MED does better than the previous year, you get a bonus. And, and Bill said, uh, no, I'm, I, I don't want any of that. And he said, what do you mean you don't want any of that? This is like free money? And Bill said, no. A plan like that means you think because I'm going to get money because I do better that I'm going to work harder. I just do my best all the time. And the salary I've negotiated is fine with me. And I don't want this plan. <laughs> I, I thought, oh, my God. That's like an incredible thing. So anyway, that was that was Bill Gaines. Okay, so now on with the then. This is where I always lose track of where everything is. Uh, now I put them all in this book. Okay. Um, we're going to start with... Wow, I don't know if anybody will get this. We're starting with stripes. All right, look at A. Okay. I can't do two things at once. Look at A. And now I have to read the card. Which fast food mascot wears socks ha! with stripes similar to A? <laughs> socks. <laughs> Which fast food mascot wears socks with stripes similar to A? I have no idea. McDonald? Ronald McDonald? Ronald McDonald? Ronald Reagan? I don't think... Jack in the Box, the McDonald Clown. Has it, yeah, has anybody checked Wendy's socks? Wendy's. Yeah, she probably wears socks. Jack in the <laughs> Jack in the socks. Mcdonald. Uh, see, Jack McDonald's. in the Box he, doesn't have a bottom. Jack in the Box is just a top. Oh, yeah, so Jack yeah, in the yeah, Box doesn't right. have socks. He, he doesn't have any socks. Ronald McDonald. All right, Myra's in with Ronald McDonald. Uh, these could be clown socks. Jammer B, what are you I'm thinking? I'm going with Wendy's. Wendy's, okay. Um, oh, Ronald McDonald. Ronald McDonald. Boy, oh boy. Uh, looking at B, which cereal, which cereal mascot is associated with the stripes in picture B? Wow. Oh, that was tough. Oh, I don't know. Maybe Doug M has an answer. W oh. Oh. Very interesting. Which cereal mascot is associated with the stripes uh, in picture stripes. B? I get it. Stripes. The Bengals. Oh, 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 my God, Myra. I would have no idea. Well, I'm going to guess Tony the Tiger. <laughs> Seems like a good guess to me. Yeah. Oh, Tony the Tiger. Tony the Tiger. Uh, uh, um. I believe Tony the Tiger was uh, drawn by, oh, damn, blocking his name out. But it was one of the mad artists who made a killing with Tony the Tiger. Okay, now we're, we're going to tell you the company. You have to guess the product. Which, K, which Keebler cookies have stripes similar to C? Which Keebler cookie has stripes similar to C? Finally, one in my wheelhouse. Oh, boy, you know. Does uh, Eugene I, I, sound right? I remember. Uh, let me see. Chat room. Um, you know what? I know the stripe. I I'm gonna go with fudge stripes. I know that there are stripes on a cookie. 
fudge moon pies, pinwheels, fudge stripes. Probably fudge because they're vertical, twisted mister. Jam would be any guess? Fudge stripes. Myra? I was never into keyboard cookies. Okay. Which keyboard cookies have stripes? Fudge stripes, correct. So the Tony the Tiger artist. Uh, Eugene Colkey? Bob. Well, the Wikipedia, uh, the Google says Eugene Coakley. Coakley. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> another another and, tiger. Yeah, the tiger in the tank. Who is that? Uh, uh, Esso. Uh, look that up. <laughs> tiger in the tank. Uh, what? Oh, what fashion company used a stripe similar to D? This I know. This I know. Which fashion company used a stripe similar to D? Wait a minute. What happened to my chat? Where did the chat room go? Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, let me look at that. Ta -da. Old Gucci Nautica. Old Navy. Hugo Boss. Walmart. Armani. Fruit of the Loom. Bugle Boy. Munchie. Tommy Hilfiger. No. I know. Did you know, Myra? No. Jamma B.? Uh, I don't know. It is Gucci. Yeah, well, Gucci. <laughs> don't, know, don't, <laughs> don't know from Gucci. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know from personal experience, but I just, there was a very funny story of, uh, what, what, what's the one that uses V's? Is it Louis Vuitton? Yeah, Louis Vuitton? Louis Vuitton. Okay. And uh, a friend of mine lived in up in Scarsdale, very ritzy community. And at the bank, almost every lady had a Louis Vuitton pocketbook. And this little woman, old, old woman walked in and said, where are they giving away the pocketbooks? I bet they felt good. All right. That was very good, chat room. That was, that was great fun. I will right, we'll do one more. We're going to do yellow. Oh, okay. Madman art. Uh-uh-uh, madman art. But it doesn't say who. Yeah, but it should be. Oh, come on. Chat room, please find his name. Um, oh my God. I had lunch with him a lot of times at the Society of Illustrators. Yes, yeah, Ray Walston. No, that's not. Can someone find who drew Tony the Tiger? Okay. Bum bum. Okay, easy. 3M sticky office supply product. That's yellow. Oh, not Tony the Tiger. Uh, what was the one that the just So put a tiger in your tank. So put a tiger in your tank. Put a tiger in your tank. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh my God. Post-it notes, post-it notes. They had one of the best ads. Does anybody remember the squirrel ad? Yes. No. Remember that? No. It's a, a squirrel <laughs> buries a nut and he runs up the tree and he jumps into a branch and he writes out a post-it note and there are 9,000 <laughs> post-it notes N near the bench, nut near the fountain, nut near the rock, nut near the... It's very... yes. Oh, here you go. Uh, oh, this is great, John. This is great. <laughs> Posted pop up notes pop up one at a time from the new dispenser. Now you'll always know where your post it notes are. So you
you won't go nuts looking for <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? What did you ever do without them? Another 3M innovation. That's awesome. great. That's awesome. That's great you found that. I love that commercial. Yeah, Minute 3M has done some great stuff. Um Whoa, lots of luck with this. What does Ms. Frizzle drive? Ms. M-S F-R-I-Z-Z-L-E. I think I might know. Oh, oh my God. Okay. Uh, chicken head might know too. What does Ms. Fizzle drive? Oh, my God. Drive. Drive. <laughs> it drives me mad. Uh, Miss Fizzle is so hot. Uh, she drives a Mrs. Fields cookie. Oh my gosh, Jamie B. What's your you Myra? Do you know? Not one single. Clue. Evidently, uh, Jamie B. What's your answer? Magic school bus. It is indeed the magic school bus. That's great fun when uh, some people know it well. Um, in the 1990 movie Days of Thunder, which soft drink brand sponsors race car driver put played by Tom Cruise? Is this humanly possible to guess this? In 1990 Days of Thunder, what soft drink brand sponsors the race car driven by Tom Cruise? Uh... Uh, oh, here we go again. There are right answers up there. Myra, you know? No. Jamma B? I do not. Uh, it is Mellow Yellow. Mel... <laughs> Urinary Track Tang. That brand did not do well. That, uh, all right, the final one here. What Swedish company's logo consists of blue letters on a yellow background? Oh, four blue letters on a yellow background. That'll help. What Swedish company... Logo consists of four blue letters on the... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. It is indeed. Jamie B, did you know? Well, I didn't until the chat room told me. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. It is Ikea. Chat room, you're really good. You're, you're really good. Um, okay, right, we'll go into our snappy answer because... Time is flying. <clears throat> First, we're going to play our Guinness Book of World Records Funky Foods question. How much did the world's largest bowl of cereal weigh? And I will give you a photo. How much did the world's largest bowl of cereal weigh? Way and there is the bowl, not actual size. <laughs> Ta -da. Let, me, let me just see. Well, largest bowl of cereal, so it counts the cereal, okay? Uh, yes, bowl and cereal, no milk. Okay, uh, on July 2nd, 2007, a bowl of cereal that weighed uh, uh, pounds was made the official world's largest bowl of cereal. Uh, wow. God, you're all over the place from 6,000 to 600. Yeah. Let 
Wow. All right. I'm going to go with two tons. Uh, to 4,000 pounds. Bill in Michigan says 6,500 pounds. He's sticking with it. Jamma B? Uh, 750 pounds. I think I'm copying somebody else. Okay. Myra? There's too many variables. <laughs> oh, pick a number. Oh, 7,000 pounds. 7,000 pounds. Okay. A bowl of cereal that weighed 2,204 pounds. So I'm off by about a ton. 2,000 pounds. Two, no, 2,200 pounds. What was your answer, Jeremy B? Uh, 750. Oh, 750. Okay. Um, uh, 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 what is that? Ooh. All right, now we're going to do our... Oh, I closed the book on it. Hang on. Did someone say that they had a stupid answer to a... Oh, yeah, here it is. Mm -mm -mm. Guys coming out of the water or the ocean. And the guy says, have you been in swimming? Okay, guy coming out of the ocean. Have you been in swimming? And you want to be really flip. So you say, ah, ah. Bob Jones, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sweetheart. And Bob Jones may still be with us. S.O. Tiger was by Bob Jones. Although S.O. is gone, right? Um, okay, have you been swimming? Uh, no, I'm a shark coming to attack you. No, I'm taking a leak. No, just collecting trash. No, I was asleep and the tide came in. No, <laughs> Miss Fizzle drove the bus into the river, took a pee, was weighing blue whales, retrieving my drones. Are you saying I'm all wet? Uh, no, I'm still swimming. Uh, no, a blue whale just spit on me. No, I'm here in spirit. Uh, I'm from the future. This is my time portal. Uh, oh, that's right. Exxon is now... Uh, no, looking for Charlie the Tuna. S.O. is Exxon. Thank you. No, I was unsuccessful. <laughs> Who said that? Twisted Mister. No, I was unsuccessful at drowning. Um, no, I was crying. No, just seeing where the toilet pipes went. No, I'm a merman. No, just escaped a whale. No, this is my new bathtub. No, I'm just standing here. No, hunting for Red October. No, my cement shoes finally broke. I was able to escape. Uh, yes, but I liked it so much I live here now. No, I was drowning. A shark just spit me out. No, I'm evolving out of the ocean. Uh, no, I'm taking a natural bath. I'm just commuting from my sailboat to work. And we'll end with, uh, I've been conducting a top secret experiment. Uh, Jaffe said, been swimming? No, I've been out walking my pet fish. No, this is how I launder my shorts. No, I just strolled over from Europe. And then, you know, whoever I, you know, I bought this book used, whoever bought the book filled them in. No, but I'm building underwater sand castles. I swim on the beach. Uh, okay. All right. A little match. Oh, get Alex. I'll get Dennis. Uh, um. No message. Uh, let me hear. Yeah. No. Uh. Oh, come on. It's the world's slowest speed dialer. Right. One. And two is the clue to come, cue to come down. Okay. All right. Ta -da. Match game time. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's see. Here are lots of... You got paper? Okay. Paper and a pen. Okay, and this is for, there you go, paper for Dennis and one for me. All right, 
is Alex joining us? Alex has joined us. Al, great, great, great. Um, oh, okay. Here's here's a match game from an original match game. Okay, the first ten months of match game, there were no blanks. Name something you might bring back from a trip in the country. Name something you might bring back. All right, well, this should be easy, I think. Name something you might bring back from a trip in the country. Uh, deer ticks, poison ivy, chigabytes, a pregnant sister, a sunburn, dead horse, two pigs and a goat, the farmer's daughter, oh my God, leeches, a manual washing machine, mud on the tires, cow poo on your boots, Lyme disease, manure, corn on the cob, corn on the cob is good actually, bet middle or cow pie, a flesh eating virus, oh my God. Alex, name something you might bring back from the country. Moonshine. Oh, you match Morgus right now. Morgus just said that. Um, Dennis, you can just shout it out. Name something you might bring back from a trip to the country. Uh, mosquito bites. Uh, mosquito bites, you got some matches. Uh, Jamma B, something you might bring back from a trip to the country. A pine cone. Uh, I got some matches. Poison ivy. And Myra said... Oh, Myra got some matches too. Lyme disease. PC guy 8088. Just, uh, that's just going by now. Um, okay. Rod Sterling and Joan Fontaine played this. I wish I wish you had kept the answers. Hollywood turns out a lot of blank movies. Played by Rod Sterling and Joan Fontaine in 1963. Hollywood turns out a lot of blank movies. This is going to be very interesting. <laughs> Try to think 1963. Rod Sterling was a, a really a, a sweet man. And very short. He was very short. Uh, kissing, silent, blockbuster, scary. Cowboy, westerns. Doris Day. Pornographic, psychedelic, stinkers, boring, sci-fi. Uh, okay, Myra, we'll start with you. Hollywood turns out a lot of scary movies. You got some matches. Scary movies. Uh, Jamma B, a lot of blank movies. Jamma B said B. You know, no one said B. I'm, I am amazed. That's a good answer. Uh, I said they turned out a lot of crappy movies. I got some answers. Um, oh, you got a lot of matches too. Dennis said porno. Charlie, not yet. Two more questions and then you. Okay, Alex. Hollywood turns out a lot of white movies. I was thinking 1963. Okay. Oh, oh okay. That's true. Um, oh, okay. John broke his leg while blanking. John broke his leg while blanking. Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> he gets more desperate every week. While blanking. Charlie. Stop. Stop. Soon. This and another question. Um, 
Let me look. Oh, okay. I got some answers. Uh, okay, Jamma B, we're going to start with you. John broke his leg while blanking. While walking. Wow. Uh, we'll do me. John broke his leg while a lot of matches while skiing. Uh, Alex, John broke his leg while... Skiing, yay, we match. Myra? Uh, John broke his leg while changing a light bulb. Uh, okay, and Dennis said... Oh, my. While thinking... Uh, okay. Uh, 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 um. da, da, ba, ba. Okay. Thelma the octopus said to Bernie the octopus, <laughs> keep your blank. Th what, what are. I put feet here, but it's not. Suckers? Not what are, oh, suckers, yes. Keep your blank suckers off me. Tell me the octopus said to Bernie the octopus, keep your blank suckers off me. Uh, oh, I can use the same. <laughs> That's what I wanted. <laughs> Tentacles is what I wanted. Charlie, you do it after this. He's <laughs> getting out of hand. Keep your blank suckers off me. Filthy, perverted, slimy, inky is great. Uh, sucky, slippery, uncontrollable. He's going, yes, Charlie's going crazy. Um, all right. Tell me the octopus at the Bernie octopus. Keep your blank suckers off me. Clammy. I got an answer. I got a, a, a match. No, I did get a match. Myra said, oh, my got a lot of matches. Lime is my, <laughs> Myra said slimy. Um, Dennis said, keep your <laughs> testicles. Oh, sorry, I couldn't spell <laughs> can, can Chat room, can you hear Charlie, he's going berserk here. You're next, Charlie. And uh, Alex, you said Inky. You got some matches. And and Jamma B, did we get you? Many. Now, boo. <laughs> uh, God, more than an hour went so fast. Ladies and gentlemen, from Anxiety State Campus, let us meet... Charlie so wags a lot. Yay! Oh my god. Is it oh my god. Oh my god. So wags a lot. Okay, Charlie. So wags a lot. Okay. Look at, look at. Okay. So wags a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, he's up here. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Look at me. Look at me. Look at that tail. Oh my god, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Uh, <laughs> it is officially so wags a lot. Oh my god, that he is so funny. Every week it gets louder and louder. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back to uh, Thursday for Giz Wiz. And this has been regular, old-fashioned Giz Fizz. What are the girls laying off? Okay. Um, regular, old-fashioned Giz Fizz is a Mark Goodson. Bill Todman, Dick D. Bartolo, Dennis Wonderland, Myra Joyce, Charlie the Dog, Beatmaster, J. 
Scammer B, Alex Dumpel, Fox Post, Gumby, Martron 3000, Salty Corn Dog, a Salty Corn Bar, Magoo Loke, Mr. Dave, Giz One, Adam 24, Stu Demos, Dylan Michigan, Redacted, Johnny Monday, Morgus Burntech, ZX Becky, Geek Wannabe Production. Brought to you by Turtle Rocks. Remember, it's not just for turtles anymore. Bye. Wow, talk about production value. Where is it? <laughs> Chat room, that was great fun. What is that, Jam and B, that kept coming up? That's a Ms. Frizzle in the Magic School Bus. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. There's Miss Frizzle. Oh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's very funny. That's very funny. Um, Thank right, you, Alex. Room. Alex, good seeing you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Dick. Uh, thank you. Okay, chat. Uh, see you Thursday for Giz Fizz and back here next Saturday for Radio and Giz Fizz. Bye. Bye-bye.